Now we shall juice vegetables. If you have no energy, and don't mind me, I'm smiling because we're uh, live on Periscope right now too. Need energy, it's a pain in the ass to go to the grocery store, yes, but if you get a juicer for like 80 bucks, then get cucumbers, celery, carrots, ginger, apples, parsley, kale, throw all those together. You have a delicious juice, my friend. Delicious juice, my friend. And the apples sweeten it up. Don't put too much ginger. And uh, make sure that your wife of Tron is warned because you will, uh, it'll be nice around the house, right? Now check this out. Okay, I'll put one more carrot. 
Because everything that the body needs is inside of vegetables harnessed through the sun through chlorophyll. Like I said, the on a microcellular level, here you go, uh, chlorophyll in plant life is almost identical to that in the blood. The only difference is the center molecule in this would be magnesium and in blood and hemoglobin it would be iron. So it's almost an identical match. So when you, I'm kind of leaning forward so you can see me, when you drink or eat raw vegetables or plant life, especially uh, organic ones that aren't like doused in chemicals, because then what's the point of eating that you're going to die anyways, right? But when you eat plant life, you're literally eating life harnessed from the sun, and it's building your blood. Because imagine all the cells inside of your blood, the hemoglobin, they're drowning. They're like plates sticking together, fighting for survival. Because we eat fast food, we drink soda pop, we eat sugar, processed foods, uh, starch, fake pancake syrup and waffles, and all this crap we eat is literally clogging our digestive systems, our bloodstreams, our... Uh, immune systems are, are, are lacking and suffering because of it. We can't excrete toxins properly. And then down on a cellular level, the cell can't excrete its own toxin. Oh yeah. I also forgot to mention the most important part to making a juice is that it's, it's peaceful to me. I Hopefully it will be to you too. It's like a ritual. right? And I always, always take my favorite inspirational or motivational program or educational program, like right now I'm listening to Evan Pagan, Get Altitude. You can't get it, you gotta pay for it. Um, it's He's speaking about business and finance and, and psychology, and I put it on the Bluetooth, and I'm, get, I'm learning while I'm getting healthy. Think about that, it's amazing, right? So it's bathing in its own shit. It, the, the cells are bathing in their own puke, they're bathing in their own globs of, uh, just horrible fats. Like, there's good fats, there's bad fats. Look up Dr. Andrew Wild, eight weeks to optimum health. Get a litmus tester, test your saliva. If your optimum is 7.2, that will um, show like with what's going on inside of your body chemistry if you're healthy or not. But basically what I'm saying is, just get yourself a big salad, some rabbit food. And, and this stuff is disgusting, right? If you're not used to it, it's an acquired taste. You get to the point, I'm going to drink it and show you my reaction because it's actually really good. That where the thought of eating a, a Big Mac is like, ugh. Because then you realize, once you start studying this stuff, look up the PH Miracle by Dr. Robert Young. It's amazing. I'm mixing them back and forth. The last time I ate a Big Mac, I think this fall we ate one because we had nowhere to go. There's nowhere but a McDonald's. And I felt so sick afterwards. I mean, it was delicious, but... Okay, I think I got a good mix here. A good mix here. Alright, watch this. Parsley on my face. That is amazing. It's like buzzing when you drink it. Then you run to the bathroom. <laughs> Why am I saying this? Like, oh man. So listen. You get yourself. Are you guys still there? Oh, there's somebody that's still there. Now, now I can see you. You're like, what does this have to do with landscaping? Oh, seriously though, I'm having fun. I got a request video to do, um... A juicing video. These people keep asking me about nutrition. He's working. He's not working. He's watching Periscope. Scion Jim. Eating the landscaping. Customer comes out and you're eating the weeds. You're like, Cuffish told me to do it. Send me a pic. My favorite recipe would be kale, celery, carrots, apples, cucumbers. But back to this. Juicing is like the number one way, or at least eating more vegetables, that you could literally change your energy levels and change your life. Like avocados, you know, bananas, uh, fiber to regulate the body, probiotics. 
uh, the, the inside of your body and the chemistry in your body is really important. There's a lot of stuff in there. I get into like colloidal silver. And good for your eyes. Uh, unbelievable anti-cancer. What it does help detoxify your body. Vitamin A is in it. It's an antioxidant. It has, you know, uh, potassium in it. Ginger is the secret from the Eastern cultures. This also is an antioxidant that detoxifies your body. It supposedly nullifies parasites. It's a, it's a huge anti-cancer. It settles your stomach. It stops nausea. Ginger is supposedly like an amazing anti-cancer. You can only use a little bit of it unless you're used to it because it's really strong. It's like that. And, you know, apples in every single juice, uh, even though they're high in natural sugar, apples are high in pectin, and which it... And antioxidants in different forms and factors from different areas. Cucumbers, same here, is the most high alkaline thing that you can eat in the world. It's great for your skin, great for detoxifying your whole body. There's a lot of water content in the cu cucumbers, so what you're drinking is high alkaline pH water. Uh, the alkalinity in a cucumber could be all the way up in the nines. When I say that, what do I mean by that? The, opti the optimum pH balance for a human body was 7.3. 369 that'd be like your blood and if it fluctuates off of that a little bit I mean you're dead in an hour so when you pee when you urinate and all these different things your your alkalinity levels could be really extremely acidic like I'll show you and it's test strips and the optimal pH balance would be 7.2 if your body is in that through your your saliva or your urine urine is a lot more accurate than saliva then you're like an optimum health, your body has a clean environment, and it's not gonna like generate disease all by itself. Here, let me get where you can see it. Hopefully you can see that. And if you're below like say 6.6 .6 and you're down in the yellows, you're acidic, that's like danger zone. And most people are sitting in there all the time. And if you're all the way up here, that's danger zone too. I bet you I'm probably acidic. I'm starting my juice fast again right now. And I have eaten kind of unhealthy the last few days because I just got off of a super health kick. Uh, we're vegetarian around the house. I eat meat once in a great, great while. I fish sometimes. And we eat mostly all organic health food. Um, the food in our fridge is like the vegetarian meats and things like that. And the eggs are organic. We don't drink regular milk. We only drink almond milk. Uh, natural peanut butter everything is like but we do go out to eat we eat normal food but I'd say 50% of the diet is healthy I've done up in the 80 and 100% completely raw vegan diet and I, I can't do it I, I don't want to say can't but it takes a long time to build up that type of habit so let's see test my pH there you go <gasps> boom uh, a little bit below 7.2 so I'm at 7 that's actually really good though. That's crazy. Forrest came in here. Uh, guy, Forrest works for me. You know Forrest. He um, is at the gym all the time working out. And sometimes in the morning, because uh, we start, we work out of uh, just right out of my house. We'll meet here in the morning. And I'm like, hey, you want a protein shake? If I'm like running late, I'm like, you want a green shake? Because my green shakes are like probably 10 up to $20 per shake when I put all the ingredients in it. It's really healthy. He goes, Sure. Comes in, I'm like, let's test your, let's test your freaking pH, Forrest. I'm like, it's going to be acidic. And he always tests 7.2 all the time. That's really interesting. He's, what, 20 years old? Really active, super healthy. So anyways, back to this. I take everything, throw it in the juicer. Um, not too meticulous. And it usually takes about two glasses. And I'll just do it live right here for you right now. Let's make it juice. I'm actually going to do a live periscope right now. So you guys can join in live and then but not to take away from you and then we'll do the juice video okay so we got the juice video with a little bit of a uh, crazy ass motivational speaking pick yourself up a juicer bed bath and beyond any place like that you can go to freaking walmart and get one go buy a bunch of organic vegetables don't follow the juice recipes trust me where you're putting turmeric and garlic and a whole bunch of ginger and crazy shit in the juice because you're going to drink it one time, you're going to spit it out in the sink. I've done this. You go, oh my god, this is disgusting. How is that Keith guy doing that? I'll never do this ever again. Don't do that. Don't put ginger or turmeric and weird roots. Put just like carrots, celery, kale, parsley, cucumber, apples because they're sweet. And then try it like that and make it sweeter with more carrots and more apples. Less greens in the beginning. 
and then I, I'm telling you, your energy levels will jump through the roof. And if you don't have time to, to do this, go to a juice bar or go to a nice organic grocery store. If there's juice bars, look this up and pay eight, 10 bucks to get a juice and slam that bad boy down and watch yourself feel like you've never felt in your life. All right, thanks. Hit the thumbs up button if you got to the end of this video. I don't even know what the hell that means. I just see other YouTubers <laughs> doing it. And I appreciate you. Peace. All right. Helps get toxins out of your body, but apples sweeten up the juice so it tastes better, right? Parsley is, and it gives you good breath, right? It's uh, green. I don't know all the health benefits of parsley besides where it's good for you. And it takes away a lot of the bad breath and stuff and neutralizes the odors in your body. So if you have like bad B.O. or you're smelly or whatever the hell, or you're not eating right, you're too acidic, this is extremely alkaline and it's green, the chlorophyll in it. Um, chlorophyll matches the hemoglobin in the blood on a micro microcellular cellular level, like almost identical. The only difference is the center molecule in um, this would be magnesium and in the blood it would be iron. You know what I mean? It's very similar on the anatomic level to human beings because that's what, because we're eating life. You're consuming and digesting life directly from the sun. It's phenomenal what vegetables are. You can't, I don't know how people live without them. Kale is extremely high in iron and potassium. Uh, it's uh, super good for you. I don't know all the stuff about kale. Same with celery. They're, they're just different. All right. So you got a million people pulling on you from different directions, all wanting something from you. And does it make you feel important? Does it make you feel frustrated? How does it make you feel? How do you react? How do you respond to it? But if it's not in line with your highest purpose and your highest priority and your highest level of being and evolution, then those things can fall down. They don't matter. I do believe that the highest level of evolution is... What's the word for it? It's, it's giving back. It's resolution. It's helping people it's ending up in an institution <laughs> the highest level of evolution is getting to a place where you become a statesman when you're young when you're a kid and you're in your teens and your early 20s you're obsessed with your body and your physical energy you're you're there's different levels right you're obsessed with how much you can do and how much you can achieve and the uppercuts you can make and how you can do leaps and bounds and you're obsessed with your physical body and all the gifts and talents that you've been given right and not really as much into the wisdom aspects, but when you hit, like, say, your 30s and 40s, that's when you get into different levels. You become, you go from, like, this I, me, my to a more of a compromising state, which is we. Like, you, you begin to develop, uh, like, the first stages of wisdom where you can really see things more at a glance, like I'm speaking, right? And then that, that goes by on this conscious state, this plane, but not until you hit the 50s does it elevate again, and then you move into what's called as a statesman. A statesman is somebody who is, well, not all old people are wise. Some of them, well, I just won't say it. <laughs> I really fucking brainwashed. But supposedly, you become a statesman to where now you have wisdom. And you can't trade anything for wisdom. That's why you're not jumping. That's why you see older people are not jumping at every little thing and they're freaking out. Unless they're neurotic, which the system has made them to be. But if you look at somebody that is really successful, that you really aspire to be like, that has their act together mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, they got their health and fitness together, their relationships are together, they're in touch with their creator, their higher self, their spirit, and they're balanced people. And they have healthy boundaries as well. These people have healthy boundaries, so when somebody comes and invades or imposes on their boundary, they, no, they put a stop to it immediately. Right? Oh, that hurts feelings though, but it's like, no. It's the ability to hear no and say no with no residue. So think about that. What is a healthy boundary? What is healthy self-esteem? It's the ability to hear no from somebody when they say no or they reject you and the ability to tell people no. No. With no residue. There's no residue. There's nothing left over. Like, it's just like, boom, that's all it is. You're on to the next thing. If they're all set, upset about it, right, that's, that's on them. That has nothing to do with you. And if they see it doesn't affect you, and this can happen in relationships and marriages and, and, and any type of working, whatever it is, especially in family relationships, if, if somebody is all upset and bent out of shape and they see that it doesn't affect you, then what are they going to do? They're going to egotistically pull at you. They're going to call you selfish. They're going to guilt trip you. They're going to try to suck you into their frame. They're going to try to suck you in and then manipulate you and drive a knife in you and use past things to try to tear you down to pull you in because misery loves company. But it's not really even their fault. 
it's part of the ego that hides in the dark and when you shine light on it, it runs. It can't deal with the light of truth. It shakes like that, right? Imagine trapping a mouse in the corner with a big ass fucking knife and you get a piece of cheese and the mouse is like, ah! That's like what the ego does. I don't know where I came up with that, but that was fucking awesome, right? So the ego, I like to like insert little jokes and make it fun, but the ego hides in the dark and when you shine light on it, it can't handle the light of truth, so it freaks out. I mean, it'll start punching and hitting or grab a fucking knife. It'll it'll start crying or be, you know, there's different uh, levels of aggression, passive, you know, passive aggressive or different levels of people going to depression on these different frequencies. Like, think about this. This is like an old metaphor. If you grab an, uh, an apple or an orange or an avocado, let's say it's an orange and you squeeze an orange, what comes out of it? Orange juice, if you squeeze an orange. Why does orange juice come out of an orange when you squeeze it? Because that's what's inside, right? So extend the metaphor, when someone fucking squeezes you, when someone puts you under pressure and someone squeezes you and starts fucking, you know, guilt tripping you, whatever they're doing to you, what comes out of you? Does, does anger, or fuck you, motherfucker, piece of shit, don't you come in the world, I'm gonna fucking kill you, bitch, bye! Well, now you're just crazy and you need medicine, right? But... The reason I'm looking back and forth because we're on live on Periscope. What up? No, we're live on a YouTube video. <laughs> but let me get a, a drink of my juice juice. This is like something on my YouTube videos. You see like carrot juice all over my face. I'm just like, fuck it. This is the carrot juice episode, bitches. Okay. So if someone squeezes you and puts you under pressure, and you get anxiety, or you get depressed, or you freak out, or you attack them, or you go into this spinning, what would be called a swirl. You go into this nightmare where you're in like anxiety, or you can't think straight, and your heart's pounding, then you start telling yourself this victim story where you're like pleading to a court. Well, fuck that person. He doesn't fucking understand anyway. He doesn't know because he's a fucking loser, or she doesn't fucking know because she's not in my fucking position. If she knew what I've been through, blah, 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 blah. like, now you're not present. That's when people get in car accidents and shit, right? Because, like, they just got in a big-ass fight, and they're like, blah, 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 blah. Boom! They get in a car accident, and now they're in a car accident, and they don't want to take responsibility. Why does this always happen to me? Right? They don't <laughs> take responsibility for it. So as you go through all that stuff, you just begin to see cut and dry what it is. You develop healthy boundaries, and... You realize that all that shit is subconscious, it's egoic, and it exists in different people at different levels, and people don't like to admit this stuff. Um, maybe not to that extreme, but it, back in my early 20s, uh, not that I'm not now, but I was really messed up in the head and in my emotions. There was a huge disconnect. I could feel it. I couldn't articulate it, but I could feel that there was this tug of war, this constant, like... Um, what was it? It felt like a uh, conflict, inner conflict that was ripping me apart every day. And I was going crazy and I couldn't bear down and see it because it kept moving. But it was inside. But I was consciously awake, living my life, very ambitious, trying to be successful. But there was this inner conflict just ripping me apart because I wanted to be successful. I wanted to be somebody. But at the same time, I felt and thought that I was a piece of shit. Like, where did this ingrained... Uh, virus come from like I felt like I was because you come from a broke family all broke other type of stuff uh, it's so it, it is hard it's still in, in all of us when you it comes down uh, do, Dr. Um, Schwartz Tony Schwartz in the power of full engagement he talks about it comes on a level of beliefs you can look up Bill Barron too and experience too when you believe you're successful and you believe like, there's no doubt in your head that you're going to achieve something and get it done. You, you do it. If you have doubt, it's not going to happen. It all starts with thought, right? So it takes a lot of time to work this stuff out for your subconscious mind to reshuffle the deck. It takes a lot of time, uh, unless you hit those stages of enlightenment. If you heard me talk about the YouTube videos where you could just, like, materialize it instantly. You're self-actualized. See it? This success folds over on itself and it doubles and it quantifies and then you can do this stuff faster and faster to the point where you just get instant realization. But in the beginning when you're like a little turtle in a shell or you're like a baby in the stuff, you're taking baby steps, it doesn't happen right away. It takes a long time but you could keep shortening the gap between A and B to get what you want 
in, in your mind and in your emotions. Now, fake it till you make it. That still works. You drive and create a whole bunch of success and create a big mess and then just pick up the pieces as you go. But, I don't know. My whole point here is achieving the inner balance in your mind and your emotions and getting the knots out of the subconscious, getting the pathologies that are the knots inside of you that like rip you apart. Uh, and it's just, they're just old habits that are being rehearsed from negative belief systems that were instilled in you when you were a kid. I remember being, uh, I was 18. I was reading Napoleon Hills, thinking Girl Rich and Kiyosaki books, and I, I I went crazy. I went to like CVS and I got a bunch of poster board, and I was writing like all these quotes all over the place, and I stuck them up on the walls all over my uh, my trailer. <laughs> and every morning, I would stand in front of them like a sergeant, and I would yell these quotes to try to force myself into being successful. And then I would go look in the mirror, and I'd be like, "You're a fucking piece of shit." Like, what the fuck was that, dude? It's because when you're young and you look around with people who got nice cars and flashy things, you're like, they're fucking, what are they? Are they they're better than me. I don't have that, so I must be a fucking loser, right? And then the interesting thing is, every single one, going back to that time, of the friends that I had, and even all the people that got houses and stuff like that at such a young age, I would look at it and take it for face value and be like, how are they doing that? And I realized that every single one of them had some type of breakthrough or some type of hand up or some type of help to get it or some type of breakthrough, right? But then the interesting thing I noticed as well, what are the percentage of people that take advantage of the breakthrough, that take advantage of the help and they go out and they make something great out of it versus just smoking it up, right? Like, how many people do you know that have had a great opportunity, but they waste it? They go and they get high, or they get drunk, or they piss their lives away, or they blow money at the casino. So either way, all paths lead to true north. All paths lead to that success if that's what you want. And it's really taking advantage of the opportunities around you. I think that that um, people who have a help or a hand up, if they're out there working their ass off and they're making it happen every single day, then that is like, that's amazing. Because who else would have taken the opportunity and went out and did what they did? I got a friend who got a chunk of money when he turned like 18 or 19. And this, I can say idiot, but he blew the money. He blew it all. And then he went into depression because he was broke and never get a job again. And then he was sitting depressed. I actually can't put this video out now. That Well, that part, I'm going to edit that out because he might see it. <laughs> but... Yeah, I'm going to get back to making my juice. And he's still there.